So I have here a Neutrik patch bay for TRS cables. It is an NYS-SPP-L patch bay. It has half normaled, and it's got what it calls split, and isolated. With my personal setup at home, I set mine up for isolated. I don't care that I have to use more cables. When I've used these other t uh, methods, then I've had issues, or at least th 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 this one I've had issues. When I use isolated, I, I don't really have any problems. So I'm going to set this patch bay up for isolated, and it'll it'll be these two because the the top one will have the gray end, and that's how it shows on both. I plug my ins and outs, I put my outs on the top and ins on the bottom. Uh, with Pro Studios there's, there's a thing called bridge out, break in. So you go out to in with the patch bay. That could be break out, bridge in. I, it was a while since I've been in school for this. So all you have to do is unscrew the front plate At least with this model. And my goal is to eventually buy one of the um, tiny telephone phantom patch base. I have five of these right now, and when I get somewhere settled somewhere more permanent, then I'll switch these out. Okay, so some of these already have the gray one on top, so I only have to take out the ones without. So you just gotta wiggle them out. And stuff them right back in. And it might be stiff, that's okay. Okay, so all the rest of these need to come out and be flipped. Because these are individual little boards, you don't have to worry about, oh, this one has to be here, that one has to be there. Just got to kind of yank them out and try not to hurt your fingers.
Now, I do have a few more of these units that I've done this to a long time ago. But I do recall them also having a normaled and half normal, but not just normaled and whatever split is and isolated. But this one does not. Now, I could be wrong. Because the tops of these, when they're used, they tend to get scratched up. And then you can't see what the instructions were. Three left. Okay. It's all I'm in. So now I have this issue. So what I do is I have the screwdriver. So you really shouldn't use the screwdriver because you can kind of scratch up the inside. So I got a jack here. So you just kind of wiggle these things to align them. go. So now they're all in. Also don't use these for your pedals. They cause wear on the input output jacks. going in. Now it's going in. If you saw these sides were kind of bent. I bought this used. I didn't pay much. These are about a hundred dollars new. Uh, nobody likes buying these brand new. 
it's one of those non-sexy studio purchases that you have to make eventually when you get enough garbage. And yeah, I, it's just one of those things that you end up having to buy and nobody wants to spend the money on it. So that's how I set these up. So now it's ready to rack. I'll show you guys how it looks in the rack. Although I don't have enough rack screws to actually install it properly into the rack, but I think you can figure out how to screw something in yourselves. So here's the back of my patch bay rack. These are just patch cables for the front to do actual patching. This is what the back looks like. And here's the front of the rack. That stuff I normally have always plugged in to where it goes. All right. So next time I go to the store, I'll buy some screws and I'll screw that in. That's pretty much where that'll go. I don't like that it's right over the power supply because uh, audio cables touching electricity and you'll get you can get hum. All right, so that's all for now. Hopefully that was informative. Please like and subscribe for more content. And I've got other videos that I'm literally working on right now. So hopefully you'll get them soon. All right. Thanks. Good night. Thank you.